Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Ferret Face Fail Productions. So today we're going to be looking at my 2022 Riehu MR Pro 300. So we've been kind of following the journey of this bike quite a bit. Now we've had a lot of bikes, a lot of time in between, and this is one of our rental dirt bikes with A&M Moto Toys. Today I really wanted to go over like some must changes with the Riehu MR Pros. Some that have been updated actually coming for the 2024 year. Um, I think that's going to be releasing out in the US in July. But yeah, we're just going to be going over some must changes with the Riehu if you buy one, if you're looking to buy one, and if you're curious. So we'll kind of go over our experience with Riehu and uh, some things that we found that make the bike just better. And while we're discussing all the fun things of what to do better with the Riehu, uh, we're going to be going up to Captain Jack's single track in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So this is a really awesome trail. I love coming up here. This is more or less my first ride of the season, so it's pretty slow and kind of clumsy. Uh, I also had made some gearing changes to the bike, so I was still kind of learning it and trying not to yeet myself off a cliff. But uh, yeah, so enjoy the ride, and we're just going to kind of talk about the Riehu. So I think one of the biggest uh, things that I did not like about the Riehu when I first got on it was the gearing of the bike. Now, I'm not sure from the factory what they were going for as far as trying to get a, um, I don't know, higher or lower gearing, a higher speed, lower gearing kind of thing going to where, um, yeah, it did not feel right for a two-stroke. Most two-strokes that you ride are geared pretty low. Um, I have to say the Riehu... Uh, was definitely the tallest gearing I've ever seen on a, on a bike like this, which was not not ideal. It was a lot of clutch slipping, a lot of going up stuff uh, was was kind of a, a pain in the butt. So the first mod that, uh, not first mod, I, I guess I'll say, but uh, the one of my favorite mods that I've done so far is uh, going to a 12-tooth front sprocket. Now, uh, of course, you can go up rear teeth. I believe the stock setup is a 1348, which uh, seems pretty tall to me. Um, in fact, the Riehu has recognized this complaint, and on the 2024 models, they've gone to a 1350, which I still don't think is low enough, but it's definitely a much better compromise in my opinion. So I went to the 12 tooth, which uh, equates to somewhere around between a 51 to 52 tooth, uh, 52 tooth rear. Uh, feels great. Uh, first gear is now quite low, and I like that quite a bit. It allows, uh, you know, when you need to hop over stuff or you're in a rock garden, it really allows a peppy gear to hop the front wheel over things, and it feels a lot more graceful up stuff. So um, I had did the last trip I did with the tall gearing was out in Moab, and that's where I really noticed that uh, it, it needed to go down. It was just kind of rough up things, and and uh, yeah, so this just makes it nice. So essentially, you've got a much lower first gear now, and second gear is mm, kind of like what first gear used to be. So that's that's how the the bike really goes after you make that change. The next must-have accessory and or mod that I recommend for pretty much all of my two-strokes and or dirt bikes is a really good skid plate. And I know the MR Pros come with a little bit beefier plastic skid plate, has no pipe protection. I really wish an OEM would look at even some basic pipe protection, but uh, I've always felt that the carbon wraparounds of the pipe really do nothing because you smash into stuff and it still dents the pipe. Pretty common for our riding around here, so I always recommend a full wrap, full plates, you know, skid plate underneath. Now, we run the P-Tech skid plates. I sell them. I recommend them. We have beat the absolutely heck out of those plates. Um, love them to death. Really, the company has treated us very well. Anytime we've had any concerns or questions, they get with us right away. Um, there are other options out there, so whatever you run, whatever you like, but uh, I recommend protecting your bike. Always, you know, not having to spend money to fix a pipe or replace a pipe or you know, your water pump or whatever it may be, side case. Uh, they really are worth their, their weight in gold, in my opinion. And we'll get onto that a little bit. Everybody worries about far too much weight. You're strapping a few pounds to the bottom of the bike. I believe the, the P-Tex skid plate is just over six pounds on this bike, it's, on, it's about six pounds for the full wrap on most of the bikes, so um, not a lot of weight. In fact, you know, hey, go to the gym, lose six pounds, don't got to worry about it. Along with that, production bits, uh, I do kind of feel that the, the radiators are maybe not more exposed, maybe a little bit more fragile, just the way that they're mounted on the Riehu. It's similar to the other bikes. 
for some reason, they just seem to be a little bit more um, flappy when they're mounted up there. Anyways, um, a radiator guards are a must. Once again, we use the P-Tech full wrap radiator guards. They are a beast. They are thick. Um, they're not very heavy, but boy, I have, I've really smashed them quite hard, and, and uh, they've yet to buckle or anything. Now, the only issue is if you've got the MR Pro or you're running a fan, you might have to get a few screws to make sure that the spall fan uh, mounts into the P-Tech radiator guards which the, the small fan they do have an opening for the fan and they do have the threading already there i believe it's like an m4 m6 screw type but the stock um fan is riveted into the radiator so you got to kind of uh, shave the rivets off with a dremel and then get some different screws a um, little bit of annoying i wish they would just mount that a little bit differently but i, I know that's kind of common in the european bikes my next one, I actually haven't even done it yet, but boy, does it really annoy the heck out of me, especially with boots on, is the rear brake pedal on the Riehu is the smallest rear brake pedal I have ever seen. I don't know who they expected to use that rear brake, if it was a garden gnome or an elf or I don't know. It, it was some sort of midget they designed that for. Um, nonetheless, I miss the rear brake all the time. It's sometimes very hard to feel in my boots. Um, yeah, so a little extender to that rear brake would be phenomenal. Uh, I hope they change that on the bikes. <laughs> I don't know why. I have a uh, that one's kind of that goes into my pet peeves. I like a, a good surface area for my my controls on the bike. Now the next thing is maybe personal preference, but I think uh, most people in the community really agree that the stock jetting of the Riehu comes. Uh, it, it comes with a very odd choice of needle, I think, more than anything. Uh, the jets, you know, you got to really jet for your own altitude, and that's understandable. I will give Riehu props that they do have high-altitude jetting from the factory, a CPD Direct. Um, what they sent over to me was pretty close to the correct jetting for my altitude and pretty close to what I use. Now, I still lean on the rich side. <laughs> lean on the rich side. I still kind of sit on the rich side of tuning, um... Uh, I just kind of I like the way that that feels. I like the fatter bottom end, but that's all personal preference. Nonetheless, uh, the, most people agree that the stock needle that the Riehu comes with, I think it's like an N1 series needle, N13H. Anyways, it's like the richest needle known to mankind. Um, it, it is uh, maybe intended for straight, just wide open throttle type stuff. I don't know. I think it's even too rich for that. Um, so going over to a, a NEDW or any um, neck J, any CJ. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So those two seem to be the most common that people uh, like. Um, I find those that like riding slow, hot, um, rocky terrain seem to like the the NEDW, and those who ride quite a bit faster and stay in that power band seem to like the the neck J, any CJ needle more. So um, clip position is going to depend on your altitude, uh, also with your your jetting and tuning. I run it on position two up here at high altitude. So I'll give you an idea, we generally ride above 8,000 feet, all the way up to 14,000 on occasion. So um, in that range, um, yeah, and I'm trying to remember what jets I run. It's it's a one. It's either a 158 or 160 main, and then um, 38 Pilot, I believe. So I could be getting that confused with my bikes, but that sounds right. Uh, nonetheless, yeah, the, from the factory, it would pretty much just drown, even with the correct jets in it. That needle was just kind of horrible. It was nothing, 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 and then power band and power band. Um, it had a very narrow kind of um, tune to it. So, And with that, on a side note, I did back off my power valve. I think uh, I can't remember how much I, I took her out a little, but um, I kind of try to stay in that fatter, torquier bottom end a little bit longer before hitting the power valve. So my tuning is probably different than others. Um, I find that uh, my tuning is pretty safe. A lot of times we're not riding anywhere close to wide open or anything like that. So, um, so there's my experiences there. Almost everybody does change the needle though. So some people say that this one is just a characteristic of the gas gas engine. Some people say, um, you know, it's all a tuning thing. I don't know. I've gone anywhere from very lean to a uh, too rich, which I'm probably closer to the too rich side right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, spooging out of the exhaust. Now, the Riehu spooges like it's going out of style. And I think a lot of people complain about this on the Facebook page. I know uh, Mark or Meeker Extreme's uh, Gas Gas from 2012. I believe it was the 2012 model. Um, his also spooged like crazy. And so he, he ran the stock carb and Electron and messed with it. And uh, it was just kind of a characteristic of the bike. So 
um, which is funny because like the betas and some of the other bikes seem to not do that. So I, I have a feeling it's just on on how they designed the combustion chamber. We've used different two stroke oils. Seems to do it. Although, you know, I, I do run more rich. Uh, I find that that's the safer option for renters uh, and longevity of the motor uh, to be a little bit more on the rich side. But uh, tuning is always a personal choice with these bikes. And that's what also makes these bikes great. A um, little bit of a soapbox, but I love how you can set up carbureted two strokes to how you ride in pretty much every way. I want to ride slow, super hot, have it richer, have a little bit more bottom end, back the power valve off. Um, then you can tune for that. You want to you wanna lean it out all the way for power up at the top end and, and bring that uh, power valve in early, uh, sweet, go for it. That's, that's one of the great things about these bikes is I feel like you can really tune them to whatever your riding style is. Oh, and while I got totally off on a tangent with the whole spoogie thing, I really, I don't know if that's something that's solvable with any sort of accessory. Um, it was just kind of a characteristic of the bike I wanted to mention. But where I was really going with the, the exhaust side was um, uh, the Riehu doesn't come with a spark arrestor stock. And I know there are a number of bikes that don't. And I, I feel like, you know, a lot of us are trail riders. So manufacturers should just be using, like, the turbine cores and the, you know, forced, forced service approved um, spark arresters and stuff in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just cited. They, they see them as just closed course race bikes. Not really the case, I think, for the majority of consumers out there. So you'd be looking at going to some sort of spark arrestor. You can use a fish spark arrestor that goes in there. Um, with the Riehu, you're probably going to get some clogging. You'll have to clean it. They recommend cleaning it every so often anyway, but with these bikes, you'll probably have to definitely pull her out and clean up that screen every so often. This next one's subjective to every rider, but uh, I think one of the my favorite mods that I recently just put on, I actually need to do a video on it, is the uh, LED light for the Riehu. Um, they sell a kit from them that's got like a 3D printed assembly that attaches really well. It fits quite good. The quality feels nice. Kind of weird paying top dollar for a 3D printed part, but I think that's we're going to see that more and more as time goes on. Nonetheless, the LED is very bright, and I think if you're going to do any sort of night riding with the Riehu, you need it. The stock light sucks. That 35-watt uh, bulb light in there is not adequate for riding at night at all. I mean, it gets you by in a pinch, but if you're going to be doing night rides like we've been doing here recently, uh, yeah, you'll want to go to a, a nice LED. And it's pretty cool that they have a kit ready to go that just mounts up, plugs in, zero problem. So we wired it up to where high beams basically turns the light on and then um, the low beam is the off setting. So it worked out quite nicely. Another one is probably, and I haven't changed this either, but this is a common one I see, so I'll bring it up, is people don't like that the starter's on the left hand. People don't like that there's the turn signal dealio up there and, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, a lot of people will, will change the switch over to your right-hand side. Personal preference. I've gotten used to it. It's not really a hindrance. I can reach over to the starter in precarious situations well enough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just gotten used to it with that bike. We have so many bikes, e-bikes, electric dirt bikes. I don't know. They're all different, so I think I've just learned to cope with it. Another one of my must-have accessories is, of course, full wrap handguards. Now, everybody's got kind of personal favorites for brands or whatever else, and some people don't like full wraps. That's fine. I've run flags as well. But um, I'm a huge fan ever since I've gotten into the Reflex Racing handguards. They're quite phenomenal. They're a little bit different in how they mount. So you can tap all the way into your end bar ends. Um, basically, you, you're screwing right into your your um, um, your bar end. So the, the, the full wrap's not going nowhere. And then it has a little steel cable. And you can mount it any which way you want because of the steel cable. Um, also kind of said to reduce some vibrations. I think that's true. I don't know. Maybe it could be a placebo effect, but uh, I really do like the Reflex Racing. Quality is quite good. We've got them on several of the renter or rental bikes. I haven't had anybody break them. When they get knocked around and smashed, they're easy to put back into place. So replacement parts are readily available. You don't have to buy a whole new set of hand guards to replace the steel cables or the springs or anything else. So um, yeah, hand guards are great. I smashed a lot of fingers. Uh, in fact, I smashed my thumb, or no, no, it was like my my ring finger, I think, on my left hand. Really bad. We hadn't put hand guards yet on the Teleria, and I went down and I smashed my hand real bad. Um, some hand guards would have saved me, <laughs> and yeah, that was not fun, not fun at all. So hand guards are a must for me. Seems kind of dumb. Seems like general dirt bike stuff, but yeah, I'll mention it anyway. 
This one also seems like a dub, but you'd be surprised how often that um, you know people people bring it up or or you know complain or whatever. But uh, when you buy a stock bike, you're kind of married to those um, tires, whatever they put them on there. Now, now the Riehu comes with the Michelin uh, Enduro mediums. I find them not to be too bad of a um, too bad of a tire. They work well enough. Now it's not my favorite tire. I would never buy it. I see no reason to ever buy a tire like that given the cost. But um, so if you buy the bike, maybe you plan in your budget a little bit to put some tires on there that you like. Um, you know, right now I'm a huge fan of the T20 rides. I also run the 550 or 505 and the 525 gummies. All that stuff works really good out here in Colorado. So um, I guess my point is, is don't let a set of tires that you don't like ruin your experience, especially when it's as simple as throwing on another tire. All right, guys, so I think that's probably about it that I've got for accessories that I really like for the Riehu. Some of those are more of a tangent than anything and, and kind of a dub, but uh, at the same time, some of my favorite accessories that I've put on the bike that have really held up. And, and what's cool about us is that these are accessories that have held up to renters. So people rent this thing out, they smash it, they do whatever they're going to do to it because... Uh, some people out at Rampart have seen my renters out there, and usually it's like, oh, wow, they weren't being very kind to your bike. Um, so it's good to see that these products are holding up. We've gone through some skid plates that we haven't held up. We've gone through some other guards that haven't held up, hand guards, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, uh, these are some things that I recommend that I think are pretty cool. Um, the the bike as a whole is has been phenomenal. We've had no problems with it. Starts up every time. Starter still works. Get questions about the starting mechanism all the time. Um, sidebar because yeah, I, I mean the 2022s that came to the United States all had the wet starter design, so they seem to not have any major problems. If they do, I would totally uh, cash in with CPD Direct on getting that fixed. Um, mine I feel like has been kind of abused and, and hasn't had any problems even in cold weather. But let me know in the comments below on what your favorite accessories, uh, tuning setup, and everything else for the Riehu is. Uh, let me know if you're interested in, in buying one. We are not quite yet a full-on dealer for Riehu. Um, you know, down the line, we're probably going to be looking at that. But right now, we can definitely point you towards some awesome dealers out there, uh, especially in the Colorado area. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one. Ferret Face out.